we now move on to the next speaker dr sandeep kumar who is a professor of anesthesiology at rml hospital and abvp institute his areas of interest are critical care and neuroanesthesia over to you dr sandeep morning all of you i am dr sandeep kumar i am working as professor in anesthesia at ab wims and dr arbel hospital delhi and today i will be talking about cricotherotomy and i will be discussing both cricotherotomy needle cricotherotomy as well as surgical cricotherotomy also see cricotherotomy cricotherotomy is a truly emergent situation keep difficult airway cart and emergency drug cart always ready before you jump for cricotherotomy it is always wiser to call your senior or inform an ent surgeon in an anticipated difficult airway in advance don't forget to take informed consent from an attendant before handling an anticipated difficult airway this is very important if you notice this word cricotherotomy that means we are creating an opening only and we are not removing any cartilage fine if you remove something then it will be ectomy it won't be an ectomy so this is very important that we are not removing cartilages we are just creating an opening and cricotherotomy membrane and see as the insert in this see this picture the things uh, the situation can be as bad as this that there is hardly any possibility for uh, mass ventilation or intubation the inability to intubate trachea or ventilate is a clear indication for surgical tracheost uh, surgical airway it can be either cricotherotomy or tracheostomy to be considered when there is edema of the glottis fracture of the larynx severe oropharyngeal hemorrhage obstructing the airway uh, we can either go for a needle cricotherotomy or a surgical cricotherotomy but the surgical cricotherotomy is preferable to a tracheostomy in emergency because it is easy to perform it bleeds less and it requires less time so it is wiser to go for surgical cricotherotomy uh, when it is a truly urgent scenario first we will discuss the needle cricotherotomy for a needle cricotherotomy position supine the patient should be supine with neck extended fine sniffing position is not necessary if you are anticipating a c spine injury most of the head injuries around 30 to 40% are associated with c spine injuries so if you are anticipating a c spine injury do not hyper extend or do not extend uh, the head sterile absolute sterile preparations are needed and identify the anatomical landmark stand on the right side of the patient and if possible uh, make a stepping position if there is there is no c spine injury then you try to palpate on the front midline of the neck the most prominent part uh, on the neck front of the neck is the thyroid cartilage which is also called the adam's apple then you slide down your finger in the midline just below the thyroid cartilage there will be circular cartilage called there is a circular cord, uh, cartilage called the cricoid cartilage in between these cartilages there lies a around 10 to 12 mm uh, space which is covered by cricothyroid membrane or it is also called cricothyroid ligament now this is how a needle cricotherotomy can be performed puncture the skin in the midline with a 12 or 14 gauge needle attached to a syringe see this is a 14 gauge cannula this is attached to a syringe uh, directly over the cricothyroid membrane if you see that we have marked thyroid cartilage and cricothyroid cartilage and the tip of the needle is in between the in the midline it is just above the cricothyroid uh, cartilage fine and note the aspiration of the air it will be confirmed when you are piercing this in this direction the 30 to 45 degree angle should be maintained and the needle should be directed cordially and you just keep on aspirating with the help of syringe and you will note the aspiration of air it will confirm the needle tip inside the tracheal lumen then remove the syringe and withdraw the stylet while gently advancing the catheter in downward and position so we have removed the needle and we have gently just pushed the uh, catheter the thyroidotomy catheter inside the tracheal lumen and the direction will be cordially downwards taking care not to perforate the posterior wall of the trachea fine and see if you don't uh, if you have a cricotherotomy set this uh, it is always preferable uh, uh, over cannulas because uh, the ventilation through cricotherotomy set is much easier as compared to narrow 12 or 14 gauge cannulas and this is the uh, this is the set which we use in our institute 
and it's called rush quick track protomy set and uh, if you talk about its component this is the cannula she trichotherotomy cannula uh, with a 4 mm internal diameter it comes with a guard this red colored the guard and there is a needle which is slightly curved fine and provided with the syringe a connector fixing material and a scalpel blade preferably of 10 or 11 number size and uh, if you are using cannula say 18 gauge 16 14 gauge cannulas you will face difficulty in connecting a uh, connecting its hub with the with the oxygen devices or resuscitators so there is a uh, there is a way by which you can connect uh, these uh, uh, hubs of these narrow cannula you can either use a 3 ml syringe fine which can be easily connected to the hub of the needle uh, uh, or the catheter and the other end of this uh, uh, syringe can be connected to a 7.5 mm endotracheal tube connector and which can be easily uh, connected to a compatible connector of the oxygen source or say ambu bag or any other oxygen devices fine and this is how this uh, this diagram is showing that the uh, picotherotomy has been performed with 10 to 11 case iv catheter uh, once you have confirmed the position inside the tracheal lumen you can attach 3 ml of syringe fine and then the connector 7.5 mm uh, from uh, 7.5 mm endotracheal tube can be attached to this uh, syringe and this can be attached to either to the jet ventilator or an oxygen source or a reservoir bag according to the availability uh, something more about the needle picotherotomy it can provide temporary this is important that it can only provide the temporary supplemental oxygen so that the intubation can be accomplished on an urgent rather than the emergent basis so that's why it is preferred over so over tracheostomy the jet ventilation technique can be performed by cannula 12 to 14 gauge for adult 16 to 18 gauge in children through the tricothread membrane intermittent insufflation for 1 second on and 4 second off can be achieved by placing the thumb over the side hole of our by connector this i will explain Uh, in my subsequent slides and this is the jet ventilator technique with ventilation which can be used if you are using a uh, narrow cannula instead of uh, can, uh, instead uh, instead of picotherotomy sets narrow diameter does not allow an adequate tidal volume delivery this is the problem with the us using narrow cannulas for picotherotomy a source of high pressure oxygen and robust connections are required so the jet ventilator is a source for high oxygen therapy when you are using these narrow cannulas and if you can notice this this y connector this tubing is going towards the tracheotherotomy uh, uh, cannula and uh, with the help of thumb the anesthetist can uh, easily uh, regulate the inflow and outflow uh, uh, during inspiration and expiration and he can actually control the tube uh, to control these two uh, inspiration and expiration process by occluding the uh, this y end fine if you don't have any y end then it is advisable to create a hole here in syringe and you can easily occlude it with the help of your uh, thumb and it will work it will solve the purpose of a y connector for you and uh, this way you can easily control expiration and inspiration also and this is how this is what we have in our institute jet ventilation and uh, about a few words about jet ventilation injection of high velocity gas into the airway through a narrow cannula without a seal is done this is very important that it is done without a seal otherwise there will be more chance of barotrauma and the expiration will not be possible if there is too much of seal is there fine it can be automatically or it can be manually done conventionally carried out at the rate of up to 60 cycles per minute fine and in pediatric the peak pressure should be reduced to 5 psi and increased in increments of 5 psi until you see adequate chest rise in adult device preset is 25 psi then increase accordingly till you see a adequate chest rise in adult patient do not initiate inspiration before the end of exhalation otherwise there will be co2 retention during inspiration the patient's mouth and nose should be closed to avoid too much escape of oxygen a uh, few words about the automatic versus manual jet ventilation automatic ventilation jet oxygen delivered automatically in this with delivery and airway pressure monitoring this is important pause when pressure exceeds a preset limit so it get, it will pause automatically whenever pressure exceeds a preset limit so it is more safer 
about manual jet ventilation device pressures are not easily monitored in this ensure complete exhalation after each delivered tidal volume so that y connector becomes important in this devices available for jet ventilation flow meter non compliant oxygen tubing to be used three way stopcock or y connector can be used to convert the continuous flow of gas to intermittent burst oxygen flush can also be used but uh, there are more chances of barotrauma with this and uh, one has to be very vigilant if you are using oxygen flush flush with these nerve cannulas anesthesia breathing circuit systems 15 mm connector from a circle breathing system can be connected to cannula manual resuscitation bag cannot provide adequate ventilation unless a very large cannula is used and the problem with the resuscitation bag is that it actually result in loss of pressure also when you you are using it with narrow cannulas about surgical cricothyrotomy uh, this is uh, very important and this is how a surgical cricothyrotomy set look like uh, you may find scalpel inside it tracheal hook may or may not be present trosseus dilator tracheal dilator or a curved or straight artery forceps may be there along with a tracheostomy tube or appropriate site curved endotracheal tube and for uh, surgical cricothyrotomy identify the anatomical landmark as we uh, did for uh, needle cricothyrotomy to palpate for the thyroid cartilage then you goes down you palpate with your help of your finger uh, you can easily palpate the cricothyroid uh, cartilage just below the thyroid cartilage in between these two lies the cricothyroid membrane and then you fix the trachea the uh, fix the larynx with the help of your uh, left hand like we have shown here and then after fixing the trachea after fixing the larynx uh, you put make a transfer incision uh, skin incision over the thyroid uh, over the cricoid membrane and carefully incise through the membrane transverse skin as we have shown that the tip of the uh, uh, of the artery forceps has uh, spread uh, the soft tissue in a horizontal direction first and then we have spread the soft tissue in a vertical direction insert the hemostat or tracheal spread into the incision and rotate it 90 degrees to open the airway fine in this way you can dilate it in either ways fine and the tracheal tube or tracheostomy tube can be inserted directly or preferably over a ventilated bougie it is always better to use a bougie in this fine uh, this is how a bougie assisted cricothyrotomy is done and as you can see this is the ventilated bougie and there is a connector here and a hole here so that you can ventilate ventilate it and there are markings on it so once you have created a sp uh, incision uh, on the cricothyroid membrane and you have spread that soft tissue with the help of artery forceps you introduce this cuff and of the bougie uh, through this opening and it should be directed cordially in 30 to 45 degree angle and then your assistant can easily rear rotate it over the bougie and you have to step but you have to stabilize the patient end of the bougie here fine you can either use a endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy tube uh, tube do uh, that should be a properly sized and after that you can easily inflate the cuff and you can check for the correct position with the help of auscultation and etco2 insert uh, this is how surgical cricothyrotomy can be done with the help of tracheostomy tube insert a proper size cuff and tracheal tube or tracheostomy tube distally to the trachea complication associated with surgical tracheostomy aspiration blood aspiration is common creation of false passage into the tissue subglottic stenosis edema laryngeal stenosis hemorrhage or hematoma formation laceration of the esophagus laceration of the trachea mediastinal emphysema vocal cord paralysis hoarseness these are the common complication and the contraindication associated with cricothyrotomy are inability to identify surface landmarks fine if that anatomy is too bad airway obstruction distal to the subglottic example tracheal stenosis or transection uh, in these cases also you cannot perform a cric uh, cricothyrotomy it will not work laryngeal cancer or coagulopathy of course other than the emergency situations and the complication can be divided into early and late early complication with cricothyrotomy are bleeding paratracheal false uh, false track posterior tracheal wall perforation in esophagus pneumothorax surgical emphysema hypercarbia and barotrauma late complications are glottic or subglottic stenosis dysphonia persistent stoma tracheostomy fistula see in a very difficult uh, anatomy cases it is useful in uh, the ultrasound is really useful in obese patient short neck and neck swelling and difficult anatomy it is not it won't take much time to identify these structure with the help of ultrasound as you have, I have shown in inside that you can easily identify thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage with the help of ultrasound and in between these two cartilage you can see for the cricothyroid membrane 
it significantly decreases the complication and increases increase the probability of correct insertion by 5.6 times. So it is really helpful in difficult cases. Role of percutaneous tracheostomy in emergency. It is not at all recommended in emergency. It is purely elective procedure. Patient neck must be hyperextended. It requires the use of heavy guide wire. As you can see, there are multiple dilators uh, with guide wires. Fine. It requires the use of heavy guide wires and multiple large shape sharp dilators. It can be dangerous and time consuming also. So it, it is a purely elective procedure. Take home message, needle or surgical trichotherapy can be done in case of emergency, cannot ventilate or cannot intubate conditions, don't hesitate, do call for help, do call your senior or an ENT specialist in these type of circumstances, you can, uh, you can be in real trouble if you don't take help. Do try for supraglottic airway devices if the time permits, remember, need trichotherapy Remember, needle trichotherapy with jet encephalation can provide the time necessary to establish it definitive airway thank you very much for patient listening and uh, that's it from my side and thank you very much dr sandeep and i will show you uh, how to perform cricotherotomy needle cricotherotomy and surgical cricotherotomy first we will uh, see the landmark on this uh, this model here you can see uh, you can palpate the th most prominent part on the larynx is the thyroid cartilage and below this the circular cartilage is the cricoid cartilage in between these two there is a gap here around 10 to 12 millimeter gap here lies the cricothyroid membrane this is the area of interest now come to this human mannequin and before coming to this uh, you should be ready with all your equipment suction uh, emergency drugs cricothyrotomy set appropriate size ED tube Take your meet you. Fine. Now, first I will demonstrate you cricothyrotomy, needle cricothyrotomy with the rouge set which is available in our institute. And uh, this has got a cannula along with a needle and a guard. Fine. And this is the connector and there's a syringe with this. Fine. And we have ambu bag. Now, first we will do needle cricothyrotomy. First, you will palpate the landmark. Because you will stabilize the larynx with your left hand like this and you slide down your finger uh, feel for the thyroid cartilage and slow low down then you feel for the cricoid cartilage in between the two there will be a cricothyroid ligament or membrane you will feel and then if your patient is conscious give local anesthetic agent then you hold the cricothyrotomy needle like this stabilize the larynx with the two fingers like this and just and if you notice this this needle has got a curve the direction will be 30 30 to 45 degree quarterly like this you will feel resistant and this guard will protect protect from further going in and after this you remove the uh, after this you will attach the syringe and you will aspirate the air will come out and then you will remove the needle and the guard like this and you just push it forward and to confirm the position with the help of bamboo bag first you will connect the this connector like this and, and then you connect the ambu and if you have etcu2 facility confirm it with the etcu2 and press it hard you will see a chest rise which confirm the correct position of the cricothyrotomy tube fine this is how you do a needle cricothyrotomy now i will demonstrate you good afternoon all of you i am dr sandeep kumar working as faculty at uh, delberry vajpayee institute of medical sciences at dr armal hospital delhi uh, my topic is manual resuscitator, uh, uh, commonly known as ambu bags. See, these are the medical tool used to force air oxygen into the lungs when patients are not or inadequately breathing. They can be used with mask, without mask, or can be used with uh, special airway devices. They can be used with peak fall or without peak fall. Mostly they are non-sterile, 100% latex free. And they are available in adult sizes as well as pediatric sizes also. 
and these are the inventor inventors of the ammo bag dr holger hasses hasse and uh, anesthesiologist dr henning robin uh, they invented it in 1953 previously it was used to call artificial manual breathing unit and uh, developed in testa laboratory and this laboratory uh, rebranded it as ambu in 1980 about the components of the ambu bag uh, see the components are uh, uh, it has got a resistive bag self inflating type of bag a uh, patient had got and has got uh, three types of valve unidirectional valve one is special limiting valve other one is expiratory valve and there is a fish mouth unidirectional valve uh, which allow the oxygen and air mixture uh, it go whenever the bag is spread it goes to straight to the lungs uh, without any backflow towards the bag and there is a pressure limiting valve which helps in prevention of barotrauma whenever the bag is squeezed too hard and there is a lot of pressure building inside it it just releases pressure from this wall so it prevents barotrauma and there is an expiration wall and there is a slit like wall here in a circular way it covers the slits so when the patient exhales co2 the it lifts that uh, wall from the slit and from that slit the co2 comes out and there is an inlet port where oxygen inlet tubing can be attached and there is a air inlet port from which it can be left open or it can uh, it can be used to attach a reservoir back to increase the fio2 if desired and uh, this move uh, this picture is showing how gas flows inside the ambu bag uh, towards left you can see the patient end and uh, oxygen uh, is marked with the green arrows uh, whenever the bag is squeezed the oxygen rushes towards the patient end here lies a unidirectional fish mouth type of valve which gets open because of the pressure and it goes inside the patient's lung but the backflow of the oxygen is prevented by the closure of the fish mouth valve so it doesn't go back to the back it's a unidirectional valve and when the patient exhale out co2 this co2 comes uh, lifts the uh, slit like expiratory valve from here and the co2 get expired uh, expelled out from the slits and this is a also important uh, unidirectional valve and come to the inlet end of the uh, ambu bag it has a air inlet it's a, it has a oxygen inlet through which oxygen uh, supply can be attached with the help of a small pipe and there is a air inlet from which whenever the bag is squeezed the oxygen goes in and now air goes in and there is a this inlet valve is there it's also unidirectional valve it prevent the escape of gases from the air and oxygen port fine here yeah. uh, about self expanding bag it is also called ventilation bag self inflating bag compressible reservoir it remain inflated in its resting state during exhalation the bag expands if oxygen from the delivery source is inadequate to fill the bag the difference is made up by the room air the rate at which it reinflates is the maximum minute volume about the non rebreathing valve which is present at the patient end which i already described it is also called directional control valve exhalation valve and inspiratory expiratory valve no or non return valve due to this gas flows out of the bag during inspiration and from the expiratory port during exhalation without mixing about non rebreathing valve uh, see there are different types of non rebreathing valves uh, it is of spring disc or spring valve valve mechanism it can be flap valve fish mouth valve that from the uh, uh, flap valve mushroom flap valve fish mouth flap valve the mechanism action of these valves are important because they may get non functional and result in various hazard so uh, the left pitch image is showing spring how a spring disc valve uh, function whenever a bag is relaxed here the spring remain uncoiled it remains it keeps this disc against the and against the entry of the oxygen or air and it keeps the this expiratory port open from which the co2 can be expelled out but whenever the bag is squeezed the pressure increases the spring coils and the disc uh, remain away from this uh, opening and it closes the expiratory port so oxygen and air can easily enter into the lung so it's important a unidirectional valve and uh, as mouth flap unidirectional valve as as a, as you can see it is a type of unidirectional valve in valve in which whenever the bag is squeezed the air pressure increases it moves the flap forward and it allows the uh, mixture of uh, oxygen or air uh, towards one side when the pressure drops it again closes it is also important type of unidirectional valve about bag inlet valve one it's a one way valve that is opened by negative pressure inside the bag as i previously said when bag is squeezed the valve closes this prevent the escape of gas through the inlet it can be simple flap or spring disc valve 
about the pressure limiting device, uh, device or pop of wall. It protect against the barotrauma and prevent gases into the stomach. As I said, in adult, it limits the pressure to be less than 60 centimeter water and pediatric less than 45 centimeter of water. This plays important role in preventing barotrauma. This is the position of the wall. About reservoir bag, it helps in increasing FIO2 attached to the air inlet port of the bamboo bag. It provides a higher fraction of delivered oxygen than resuscitated with tubing reservoir. Ideal size, what can be the ideal size of if it is very large in size, it will be cumbersome to use bamboo bag. And if it is less in, uh, very small in size, and then it will pro compromise upon the FIO2. Hazards are also associated with bamboo bag use, high airway pressure, non-breathing non walls sticking in the inspiratory position, high oxygen flow, asynchrony between patient, exhalation and demand wall, pressure limiting device failure, excessive resistance, hazards with the use of bamboo, other hazards are rebreathing, hypoventilation, low deliver oxygen concentration, contamination, inhalation of foreign bodies. This is how bamboo bag is used, uh, proper seal is required, sniffing position is needed, FC spine contraction indications are not there. And whenever you squeeze the bag, look for the chest rise. If it is not there, modify your technique and you can use or you can take help from other or use other airway devices. And how to check manual resuscitator before use? This is very important. First, visual inspection should be done to look for any foreign body and dust inside it. Second, connect an adequate sized test lung to the patient connector, which is very easy available. Squeeze and release the resuscitator several times and check that the test lung should fill. Third, during continuous ventilation, expansion and relaxation of the test bag must be visible. If not, check the inlet valve shutter and patient valve shutter. Fourth, close the pressure limiting valve and patient connector with the thumb while compressing the resuscitator bag firmly to check the tightness and proper valve fitting can be tested by this. Fifth, open the pressure limiting valve and close the patient connector with thumb. The pressure limiting valve should now be activated and it should be possible to hear the expiratory flow from the valve. Uh, how to test reservoir bag? Supply a gas flow of 3 liter per minute to 5 liter per minute to oxygen tube. Check that the reservoir should reservoir bag should get filled. If it doesn't, then uh, you can expect a leak in it. How to clean and disinfect bamboo bag? Perform a hand hygiene, hand wash properly. Don a PPE, PPE to protect against splashing, spraying, or aerosol. Wash the equipment with detergent and rinse with clean water. How to disinfect all those parts of the ambu bag which are heat resistant can be cleaned with the help of steam or hot water of around 121 degrees centigrade or more. And those parts which are heat sensitive can be uh, treated with chemicals like hydrogen peroxide more than 0.5%, ethanol 70-90% or 1% sodium hypochlorite. And uh, about dry method, physical equipment, washer, pressurization, autoclave can be used for chemical method. Let the part dry on the clean cloth. After that, remove PPE, wash hand properly, and then finally store the equipment in a dry and closed packaging so that it will be available next time. Take home message uh, for this lecture uh, Ambu bag is a handheld tool used to deliver positive pressure ventilation. It consists of self inflating bag one way wall and oxygen reservoir mainly proper knowledge about the equipment can prevent hazard associated with it and it should be but it should be tested before use in order to avoid complication so the testing is very important before you use it thank you very much and all the best for your exams Thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Any questions from the audience? Uh, no, ma'am, there are no questions. Okay. Uh, ma'am, there's one video actually, which uh, was not there in the, which accidentally was missed in the lecture regarding the surgical, cre regarding the cre uh, surgical cricothyrotomy. So we are just trying if we can uh, play it from our end. So we can just wait for a few seconds. We are trying okay. from our end to play it so that the students okay. can gain from it. Yeah, sure. Meanwhile, I accept my regards. I'm Dr. Sandeep. I did my PG under you, ma'am. Yes, it is yes, good Sandeep, to see I you, ma'am, after a long yes. time. And I'm honored that you are chairing my I agree. Lecture. Thank you, Sandeep. And the lecture was also very good. Both you and Nitin did a very good job. Thank you, ma'am. In fact, Thank I you. also, because of the support it was a good from revision. The department, ma Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, we just got two yeah, questions. Meanwhile, we can uh, attend to yeah. them. One is any recent changes in full form of AMBO? 
Sandeep, I think you can help. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, see, if you read DOS, there are approximately twenty-five alternative names for Ambu. Fine. So don't bother about these uh, names. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope I am audible now. Uh, see, if you see literature, yes. there are see, various. Yes, you are very names. much audible, sir. various uh, full forms of ambu bag some people call ambulatory manual breathing unit self uh, uh, resuscitating bag and there are many many acronyms used for ambu bag i think you don't uh, need to follow one particular thing if you see the literature you will find many acronyms for similar to the ambu bag you can call it as artificial manual breathing unit or ambulatory manual breathing unit whatever you call but you should know the function of it and the importance of it fine i hope i have clear myself yeah and the next question is is the expiration valve and the fish mouth valve the same in nambu uh, no uh, if you again uh, go through my uh, presentation the fish mouth valve is uh, is uh, located just uh, see it will allow the mixture of oxygen and air once you press the back it is one way directional valve but you see the expiration valve is a disc shaped valve which is surrounding the fish mouth valve and uh, if you can if it is possible you can just show uh, uh, them the again the slide if it is possible uh, to uh, show them how it was how it uh, where is definitely different but they are unidirectional valve expiratory valve function is to expel out co2 fine and whereas fish mouth valve is present at the patient end which which allows the mixture of oxygen and air uh, so that it goes in, it can easily go inside the lungs but it doesn't come out and go again back to the back i hope i have cleared it yeah so these are the two questions yes. uh, unfortunately we are not able to play the video currently but uh, once we are in a position we will definitely play the video maybe towards the end of today's session we'll be playing it so the students can wait uh, and uh, we can uh, we'll try and make it work uh, thank you so much uh, ma'am you can wind up the session thank that Okay, thank you so much, everybody. We like by the session now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thanks to both the speakers for this wonderful presentation. We'll quickly have the second quiz of the day before we proceed on to the second last session of the day. Can we have the questions, please? So the first question here it goes: best evidence-based method to check the proper positioning of endotracheal tube by ultrasound. A. Assessment of the diaphragmatic movements. B. Checking for the lung sliding. C. The transtracheal identification of correct tube placement in trachea. Or D. Ruling out esophageal intubation. You need to quickly answer these questions. The the faster you answer the better it is so next question is entitled carbon dioxide is measured at which point okay a b c d e you can see in the graph so the options are a c point b is the d point c is the slope of b and c and last d option is the slope of c and d Okay, let's move on to our next session. For this, I would like to invite Dr. Rajiv Gupta, Sir is consultant and anesthesia GC national. Sir is affiliated to Maharaja Agrisen Hospital in New Delhi, and Sir's areas of special interest are airway management and pain management. We welcome you, Sir, and now I would hand over the proceedings of the session to you, Sir. So you mute. You can unmute yourself, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've done that. 
So, first of all, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Nitin Chaudhary, who is a St. Professor associated with ABVIMS and RM Hospital New Delhi, a special area of interest pediatrics and obstetric anesthesia. So, I invite Dr. Nitin Chaudhary. <laughs> 